Hey, Phil Play from BadAstronomy.com here doing a live Q&BA chat session on Google+. And I got a great question. It is from Ali Marie from Chicago, Illinois, who asks, what is the best way, in your opinion, to draw kids into science and skepticism from a young age? It's a really good question. I like this question a lot. It's, it's more philosophical, but it has a practical application. Kids are natural scientists. And they, they love sort of the basic stuff about science. They want to name everything. They want to catalog everything. They want to categorize everything. This is a rock. This is an animal. That's a tree. Right? And when they're very young, when you do that sort of thing, that helps you understand things better. You put things into general groups. That's a very human thing to do to help you narrow down the possibilities of it so that you can understand it better. This has its drawbacks because then it becomes very easy to overgeneralize, and uh, that might uh, have bad implications like, you know, racism or sexism. On the other hand, it does help you get a grip on things. Now, I could show you a picture of a panda and a chameleon and say, what do these two things have in common? And you can say, well, they have four legs. They're quadrupeds. And that's good, and that helps you maybe understand how they move around and how they do things. On the other hand, the, the, the panda is a very different type of animal than a chameleon. So, uh, you know, one's warm-blooded, one's cold-blooded, one is big, one is small, scales, one has fur, right? And these, these similarities and differences tell you a lot about them, and that helps. And kids do that very naturally. So I would say encourage that with kids, but make sure that they're not, uh, they're not um, over-specifying things and say, oh, you know, those do have four legs, but look at the color of this one versus that. You know, show the differences as well as the similarities. And that will help them broaden their mind and not get too narrow about this. On the flip side of that, kids tend to believe authority. That's an evolutionary trait. You know, kids want to believe what their parents tell them, so parents can say things that might be incorrect, or there might be a belief system that, uh, that may not map to reality terribly well. Uh, and so I would, I would caution you about that as well. But uh, if you encourage the kids to ask questions, that is probably, if, if I had to say, what is the one thing? There's the one thing we can do to, to encourage kids to think about things, to be more scientific, more skeptical. I would say encourage them to ask questions. Never say that's a dumb question. Uh, if, if you don't know, say, I don't know. And, and, and then say, let's, or even better, say, I don't know, let's find out. I wrote this in a post recently that one of the most powerful words in science is yet. I don't know yet. Let's find out. Let's do the research. Let's do the experiment. Does a grape fall faster than a heavy rock that's the same size or a chunk of iron that's the same size? Or do they, does one fall faster? I don't know. Let's find out. And it's a simple experiment like that that can, that can lead to profound implications. Galileo did this. Uh, the fact that gravity pulls on all objects the same and they all fall at the same rate is a profound idea philosophically as well as scientifically and it has implications for the entire universe and you can do that by holding up a grape and a rock and dropping them together and seeing that they hit at the same time. Have them think about the question first and say what do you expect? Do you expect the rock to hit first? Do you expect the grape to hit first? Have them write it down, think about it and then do the experiment and if it's wrong go back and try to see where their thinking went wrong. Encourage them to think, encourage them to ask questions. Have them look up things on the web Ask them, does that make sense? Do you trust that website? Is it just somebody else who's making stuff up? Or does this person actually uh, have the ability to understand this material and write about it clearly so that you, maybe you can trust them? Or at least trust them provisionally, right? And then go to another website and see what they say about that person. Um, this can lead to trouble. For every global warming site, you can find a global warming denial site. For every evolution site, you can find a creationism site. Um, but, you know, who's got the evidence? Who's got, uh, who's got the scientific backing to show what they're saying is correct? And, and, and there's going to be back and forth. Who's got the more convincing arguments? That's, these are all steps that you can take to encourage kids to be scientists and skeptics. And the last part I would say, since I've already run on very long here, the last part I would say is make it fun. Science is cool. Science is fun. When you look at a picture of a planet, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. You see Saturn with its rings and its moons. But you know what? There's, there's more going on there. You know, oh, look, there's a storm on Saturn's atmosphere. Look how thin the rings are. Why is that? 
why, I read about this uh, in a post a couple of times. Why is this moon round and this one lumpy? You know, is it just size? Is it something else going on? Why, why is that? And, and you, can, you, you can show that there's a beauty just visually uh, in science. Of course, when you look at these pictures, they're gorgeous. But there's a beauty in the knowledge of learning from them and saying, you know what, there's more going on here. When you break up the colors of the rainbow and understand why the rainbow exists, it doesn't detract from the beauty of it. When I look at a sunset and I see that the sun is getting squashed, you know, sometimes you see it, the sun looking like it's getting squashed as it's setting and it turns red. I know why that happens. And it's cool. And it takes nothing away from the beauty. It adds to it. There's another dimension to the entire universe than just seeing something cool or hearing something cool. When you understand it, when there's knowledge behind it, that is power. That is, you know, oh, I get it now. And that's cool. And then there's the next thing to learn and the next thing. And the beauty of science and so one thing that kids don't always understand because they're always busy cataloging it, looking for definitions, looking for lists of things. It's not like that. It's a growing system. It's a process. There's always the next thing to learn. When you find out why that happens, it turns out, oh, there's a little bit of a funny thing going on there. And there's the next thing to learn. And the next and the next and the next. There's no end to it. And that is so wonderful. There is nothing that inspires me more than knowing that there's always more to know.